就玩完啦。逼我哋啲香港人啊，我哋要企出嚟反對。少，即系话过分咗啦嗱，系明确系需要嘅，需要呢啲武力去制止呢啲暴徒。如果我仔每次就系、是、我就要咁样样，我都只系迁就佢嘅，而我去纵容佢呢啲任性嘅行为，佢有后悔。我相信香港而家民情最高漲，亦都係呢段時間。咁即係而家唔行出嚟嘅話，其實之後可能即係亦都冇咩更多嘅機會，更加好嘅機會去彰顯我哋民羣眾嘅力量。This day of protest is months in the making. In February, Hong Kong's government proposed an amendment to the city's extradition law to allow the transfer of suspects between Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, and mainland China. The purpose is to make it possible for a Hong Kong man who accused of murdering his pregnant girlfriend in Taiwan to be sent there for trial. But it's the possibility of being extradited to mainland China that has these citizens concerned. 一旦通過咗呢個條例嘅話，其實譬如我哋有一啲佢中國大陸所講嘅一啲政治犯，可能係會由誒俾、呃、由香港呢一度啦，去移送翻去中國嘅大陸啦。而且呢一個係 override 咗成個嘅誒誒 legislative system 咯。The government has already tried to appease opponents of the extradition bill. By raising the threshold of extraditable crimes and limiting extradition requests to only China's top prosecution office and Supreme Court, but the changes have done little to ease the fears of the people. Hong Kong is one of the few places in China where people can gather en masse to voice discontent at the government. This march is on a scale the city hasn't seen in decades. Organizers estimate that more than one million people are taking part. Most go home when it's officially declared over at 11 p.m. But a few hundred camp out behind metal barricades outside Hong Kong's Legislative Council. In three days, the second reading of the extradition bill is to take place inside the debate chamber. It's the next step in the process to get it passed into law. Shortly after 1 a.m., Hours before the scheduled second reading of the extradition bill, protesters take over roads leading to the legislative complex. Police appeal for them to leave, saying they'll use appropriate force if necessary. But the crowd gets bigger. The government instructs employees to stay home and delays the reading of the bill, but the demonstrators stand their ground, refusing to leave even amid heavy showers. A few minutes after 3:30 p.m. Police being pelted with water bottles, umbrellas, and other objects. Use pepper spray, tear gas, 
and rubber bullets to disperse tens of thousands of protesters. The police chief declares the situation a riot. Anyone convicted of rioting faces a jail term of up to 10 years. By nightfall, most of the crowd has been cleared. Now it's the government's turn to speak. Hong Kong's top official, Chief Executive Carrie Lam, gives an interview to local TV broadcast in prime time. She's not willing to bend on protesters' demands to abandon the extradition bill. Anger is also directed toward Hong Kong police for what protesters say was the excessive use of force during the June 12 clashes. This man is speaking to us on the condition of anonymity. He was an auxiliary policeman for five years, but quit after witnessing that day's events. After our repeated internal deliberations over the last two days, I now announce that the government has decided to suspend the legislative amendment exercise. Despite Carrie Lam's announcement, a second mass protest goes ahead as planned. The turnout is bigger than Hong Kong has ever seen before. Organizers claim nearly two million people have come out to march. They're demanding the complete withdrawal of the extradition bill for police to retract the term riot when describing the June 12 clashes, the dropping of charges for those arrested during the clashes, an independent inquiry into allegations of police brutality, and they also call for Carrie Lam to step down. But on this day, there is no tear gas, no violence just a sea of demonstrators flooding Hong Kong streets. This march also takes a more somber tone. Many lay flowers in front of a shopping mall where a day earlier, a man in a yellow raincoat climbed a top scaffolding to protest against the extradition bill and fell to his death several hours later. Fellow demonstrators dubbed him Raincoat Man on social media. The chief executive admitted deficiencies in the government's work has led to substantial controversies and disputes in society, causing disappointment and grief among the people. 
The chief executive apologized to the people of Hong Kong for this and pledged to adopt a most sincere and humble attitude to accept criticism and make improvements in serving the public. With a written apology not good enough for protesters, Chief Executive Carrie Lam addresses the public. I personally have to shoulder much of the responsibility. This has led to controversies, disputes, and anxieties in society. For this, I offer my most sincere apology to all people of Hong Kong. If we do not have that level of confidence to address those anxieties and fears and uh, differences in opinion, we will not proceed with the legislative exercise again. It is uh, very unlikely uh, that the bill will be able to make the deadline of the uh, end of this term. In other words, the bill is effectively dead in the water. Unless the government revives it and attempts to pass it again, it will expire in July 2020. Dozens watch Lamb's apology from a designated protest area outside the legislature. I think that she should use this the word withdraw, but she didn't use it. I'm very disappointed and a bit angry about that because that what our citizens, uh, that what Hong Kong people, thousands and millions of Hong Kong people walk on the street and paradise and want her to say this word with joy. In the days that follow, demonstrators keep up pressure on the government and police. Thousands besiege police headquarters demanding the exoneration of arrested protesters. Despite pleas to disperse, the crowd refuses to budge. Officers are trapped inside for the entire day and well into the night. A spokeswoman says the siege has prevented police from responding to dozens of emergency calls. After some 15 hours, the protesters leave without incident. Just days later, about a thousand protesters return, surrounding the building and blocking entrances. Some throw eggs and spray graffiti, calling the police dogs. Never before has so much anger been directed at Hong Kong police. The ordeal lasts for six hours before the protesters leave at around 4 a.m. But police also have their support, who hold their own rally to speak out in defense of the officers and their actions. 當時的指揮官在現場那個命令的火機器開槍是明確是需要的人們的騷動的時間警隊的警方控制的場面比我們更加激烈用的武器更加犀利 1st marks 22 years since Britain handed Hong Kong back to China Dignitaries gather for the annual flag-raising ceremony Carrie Lam uses her address this year to try to calm the political tensions. Gun 你都必須要開放包容。Just down the street, protesters trying to get to the flag raising once again clash with police. More than a dozen officers are sent to hospital after being doused with what is believed to be drain cleaner. At 2 p.m., an annual protest march begins in Victoria Park, eventually attracting as many as half a million people from all walks of life in Hong Kong. 
But events outside the legislature will overshadow this peaceful protest. Hundreds of demonstrators, mostly young people, are besieging the building. And soon, as their frustration hits boiling, the crowd turns its anger on the building itself. For the first time in its history, Hong Kong's Legislative Council is stormed. The riot police who were seen waiting on the other side of the metal barriers retreat as the first protesters rush in. back for about two hours. The protesters quickly leave the building, and within an hour, the streets are clear. This is something that uh, we should seriously condemn because nothing is more important than the rule of law in Hong Kong. It will take months and cost millions of dollars to repair the damage at the Legislative Council. While many Hong Kongers don't condone the protesters' actions, they say they can understand what pushed them to do so. They 心不甘情不願,黑曬塊面,咁你叫道歉我就真係我我坦白講我都唔接受。As the weeks go by, tensions continue to escalate. Protesters hold more demonstrations, growing increasingly frustrated at what they say is the government's unwillingness to address their demands. Carrie Lam changes her language and says the bill is dead but the protesters insist it must be completely withdrawn. Violence hits an unprecedented level after a protest march in the northern part of Hong Kong, as police and protesters clash across three shopping centers. More than 20 people are injured. One police officer has his finger bitten off. More than 40 people are arrested. Streets swollen with protesters and angry demonstrations ultimately got Hong Kong's government to back away from the extradition bill. But the protests highlight a much bigger issue. Many fear that China is encroaching on the freedoms that are a fundamental part of the Hong Kong identity freedoms that the protesters say they will fight to defend. While the demonstrations continue and the situation escalates, Hong Kong is showing that it is most definitely not any other Chinese city.